In physics, we use a lot of vectors, so let's talk about them a little bit. As you've probably heard, it is a number with a direction. But now we have to think about how we do that mathematically. We can't just say a number with a direction. You may have noticed vectors kind of described two ways. Sometimes they're described as sort of a length and a direction. And then sometimes they're described in terms of components. So what's really happening is they're being described in two different coordinate systems. There's two ways to describe a position in 2D. There's polar coordinates and there is Cartesian coordinates. So let's look at polar first. If we're just going to draw a vector, here we go. Let's call it V because it's probably kind of like velocity. And I'll draw it over here as well. V, velocity. The way you would describe this in polar is you have some velocity V with some amount, which we call the magnitude which we write like that. You write the vector with a vector symbol and you put the bars around it. That means magnitude. That really just means the length of the vector or the amount. So you're given a magnitude and you're given a direction. And formally, you should define the direction um, counterclockwise from the horizontal axis to the right. This technically, if you had an xy coordinate system, it would be from the positive x-axis counterclockwise. In problems, you'll have the angle defined all kinds of ways. But if you want all the equations to work the same every time, Really, this is how you should define the angle. Anyway, polar coordinates, all it takes to define a vector is a magnitude and an angle. In Cartesian coordinates, same vector, we think of it as being in an xy coordinate system like this. And we think about the component, how much of the length of this vector is along um, the x-axis. So this is like is vx, and we say how much of it is along the y, and that's vy. So just like polar, Cartesian requires two numbers to specify the vector. It just requires the two Cartesian coordinates, vx and vy. Now, in a problem, you are going to have to constantly go back and forth. Often in a problem, you're given the polar, some velocity at some angle, but to do the physics, you have to get it in Cartesian, because you treat those separately uh, when you do problems. And then in the end, they might ask you for the total uh, uh, velocity and direction. You have to go back and give the answer this way. A lot of back and forth. So let me just give those equations. You can get them from trig. But basically, if you have the magnitude and the angle, then you may have seen that the x velocity is the magnitude. I'm sorry, the x component is v cosine theta. And the y component is v, the magnitude, times the sine of theta. And if you define theta this way, all the negative signs, everything will work out every time if that's theta. And if that's theta. If theta is somewhere else, those equations will change a little bit. But hopefully you'll use trig to get them every time, so you'll be able to figure them out. If you want to come this way, so say you figured out your two components and you want to know the magnitude. This way, then, um, you would say that the magnitude, the length of the vector, from the Pythagorean theorem, square root of vx squared plus v y squared. And if you want the angle from the two components, you have to use uh, the tangent function. So you get that theta is the inverse tangent of vy over vx. So a big part of what you'll do is right here. You'll have problems going back and forth, back and forth with vectors. A few other things you need to be able to do is it helps to be able to um, add vectors. Right, so if you have two vectors, say you got one like this, and you got one um, going down like that. Say um, A and B, maybe they're two velocities, and you want to add them. In polar, you just do what you've probably heard of as head to tail. If you want to add B to A, you take B, you draw it over here, and you put the head, the tail of the second vector at the head of the first one, and then you draw the total vector like that. So this is A plus b. And you say, can you pick up a vector and move it like that? And yes, you can. You can. Um, in Cartesian, if you wanted to add two vectors, then you would have known that a is ax um, i hat plus a y j hat. And you would have known that b, you would have had xx component, i hat plus b y j hat. And to get the sum, you just add them. You would know that the vector a plus b is 
add the components ax plus bx i hat plus a y plus b y j hat and that's how you add if you want to subtract you just add the negative to make this one negative you put a negative sign there and a negative sign there you multiply it by a negative one if you want to make this one negative you flip its direction and that's how you make a negative that's everything except what was that hat what in the heck is i hat and j hat what was i talking about those are unit vectors and these tend to freak people out okay unit vectors so they're important in cartesian because these are numbers are scalars vector components are not vectors they are scalars and we know that this one tells you along the x-axis this one tells you the y-axis but we want to be able to write it algebraically we want to be able to, to add them so that's why we have this notation that the total vector v is the x component times i hat plus y component times j hat and those are literally vectors whose magnitude is one but have the direction of the axis that way when you multiply them it has no effects on the length of the vector in that direction right so vx i hat is a vector this is vx i hat the unit vector gives it the direction along the x but it doesn't affect the size that's what's called a, a unit um, vector and j hat same thing this is the unit vector it's that way so when you multiply it by y vy j hat is a vector and it has the exact magnitude of vy so bothers people to see them there they don't know what to do with them can i take a derivative of it what is it so mathematically just think of it as a constant okay it's constants and we always separate our x's our i hats and our j hats so we have all the x components over here all the y's over here but say if you were going to take a derivative all you would do is treat it as a constant. Often when we write something as a constant, we like to put it out front. But unit vectors we usually put in the back. Okay, so if say I had um, uh, the vector x, or let's say um, r, we usually think of a position vector like that. r is uh, 3t i hat plus t squared j hat for some reason. Say that's an expression that you're dealing with and you wanted v, you would take the derivative, we'll be getting to this in a minute. To take the derivative, you just treat that as a constant, just ignore it, and take the derivative of this part. So the derivative dr dt, or the velocity, would be 3, and it was just a constant along for the ride, 3i hat, plus the derivative 2t, j hat. Same thing if you're taking an integral. If you have an integral of this vector, it would really just break into two integrals. One integral times i hat, one integral times j hat, and you'd treat i hat and j hat like constants. They are constants. You would treat them like constants when you do the integral. Okay, so get used to using them geometrically, and if this comes up, just treat them like constants.